Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I am Katie Granick, the sales manager with Made Goods. I wanted to thank each of you for taking the time to join Made Goods designer discussion about creating a sanctuary at home. In Step with Design ADAC's theme of refreshing and renewing, we wanted to spotlight a few friends of Made Goods who always deliver inspired spaces with a fresh perspective. Reflecting on the past year, we have rediscovered the importance of having sanctuary spaces within our homes. So with our designer panel's help, we will delve into what it means to create a sanctuary space and how you, the audience, can adapt their design principles into your own homes. Uh, before I introduce the panel, I would just like to ask that if you have any questions while you're listening and learning and watching, uh, please submit them using the chat feature in the Zoom, and then we will do our best to address each one of those at the end. So without further ado, let me introduce our fabulous panel of designers. Charlotte Lucas of Charlotte Lucas Interior Design is based in North Carolina. Her style is distinguishable through her unique use of color, pattern, and detail. Welcome, Charlotte. Thank you. I'm so glad to be with all of you today, although not in person. It's so nice to see everyone's face. Yes, we're so excited to have you. Thanks. Michelle Smith Boyd of Smith Boyd Interiors is known for creating aspirational spaces with his keen eye for fashion forward details. Good morning, <laughs> Michelle. Good morning, how are you? My sanctuary is outside today. I love it, gorgeous. <laughs> and finally, Jessica Bradley of Jessica Bradley Interiors creates restorative havens through fresh and inviting designs. Hey, Jessica, how are you? Good, how are you? Glad to be here. Yay. Again, to be in person, but. <laughs> so soon. I think we're all hopeful for very soon. So thank you all for joining us. And I think I'm just gonna dive right in. Let's ask the hard questions. Um, so I'd like each one of you to respond and tell us what does sanctuary mean to you? Charlotte, if you wanna kick us off. Absolutely. You know, um, I think everyone this past year has redefined the meaning of sanctuary. Um, sanctuary to me is just it's, it's home and it's being with family. Um, I think being able to escape the, the busy life of work and um, and with for me, children, um, sanctuary is just a, a time to relax. <laughs> so um, so sanctuary is at home relaxing for me. Oh, I love that. I couldn't agree more, absolutely. And Michelle, tell us a little bit about what sanctuary is for you. Can any room be a sanctuary? I think just about any room can be a sanctuary. Immediately for me, I think about mood and I think ultimately we are responsible for evoking a mood, right? And so I think I can create that anywhere. Sometimes my sanctuary is in my kitchen on this little settee at the dining table. You know what I mean? I can't wait to get there. It's any destination, in your home can be a sanctuary. I love that. Any destination. I love that you have destinations in your home. That's perfect. And, <laughs> and Jessica, tell you know, me. Atlanta traffic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your car. If you're in um, yeah. Atlanta traffic. You're thinking about getting home. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's that is exactly true. Um, Jessica, tell us a little bit about sanctuary for you, and how is it different from maybe any other room in this space. Um, I think that sanctuary to me is a space that emotes a sense of calm, beauty, peace, and restoration. But I also agree with Michelle that I think that um, you can make any space in your home a sanctuary, especially it's just more about your perspective. And I think it's, you know, how you, how you can look at a space and see a positive in something maybe that is a place that you would not never think is a sanctuary, like an office or some sense. And you can turn it in to a space that entices you to come in and you can find peace there. So I think it's just about your perspective and figuring out the ways that you can um, turn the space, like a kitchen, like you just said, it can be hustle and bustle, but how can you make that place a calming environment and 
to bring um, happiness and peace and family um, memories and things like that. So I think it's the biggest thing for me is perspective. I love that. I think each one of you hit on something that's so important, which is kind of finding that mood, finding that vibe, that theme. So um, we, audience at home, asked our fabulous designers to share some of their inspired spaces. So um, I want to start with Charlotte, and we're going to pop over to one of your interiors here with my Yes, thank you so much. Um, and I wanna talk a little bit about this space. So it is a bedroom, it's obviously you know, beautiful and textural, but so calm. So tell us a little bit about the space we're looking at and what specifically that the clients might've asked for that resulted in this, this design. Sure. So um, this bedroom, um, is a client who lives in South Carolina and they have a beautiful house and they have a large family of five. So the clients requested um, a sanctuary for their bedroom where they could really come and retreat away from the hustle and bustle of their life with three kids. Um, you know, just get busy with kids and activities. And, you know, as a mother myself, I feel like everyone always need something from you as a mother. And so it's nice to go and retreat in a sanctuary and have some space um, to reflect and relax and, and, and just some quiet time sometimes. So that was the request of this client specifically for her sanctuary. And I love that. I think you provided that in so many little moments here. We've got that great bay window with those beautiful you know, chairs and just kind of a quiet spot. It looks like they could go and just. Yeah, she alone. also wanted, I mean, the bedroom was large. And so, and she also has a beautiful walk-in closet that she can also escape and hide <laughs> um, when, when she needs to. But um, they did have this beautiful bay window and she did want some comfortable seating so she could come up with her morning coffee after the kids got off to school and just kind of sit back and, um, and, you know, kind of take a moment before the day started. So I love that. that as well. Yeah. I love that she can just kind of retreat into her own, mm -hmm. you know, mini uh, sanctuary for lack of a better yeah. word. Yeah. And the morning light and the bay windows are so beautiful. And so it's just a really calming and peaceful place to be. And the, ha the rest of the house does have a lot of color. And so we didn't really, she did not want a ton of color in here. There are a it's hard to tell from the pictures, um, you know, pops of lavender in the space, but it really, I think lavender is a very soothing color. Um, mm -hmm. And so this, she wanted this to be really, um, just really tranquil. I love that. I think it's, I mean, I think it's stunning. And I love that there's that contrast too between the rest of the home, um, like you're saying. So it's kind of, you know, when you walk out your, your bedroom door, you're like, Bam, okay, I'm ready now. Yeah, and, and I think what Michelle was saying earlier, you know, evoking emotion and mood. And so when she does, you know, walk out of her bedroom and there are colors and, it, you know, it's exciting and it does evoke a different mood from her bedroom. And so when she steps into her bedroom, it's that calming mood that sets in, so. Fabulous, thank you. And next, Michelle. So I noticed when looking at your photos that there's so much, texture and pattern play and color. And I think the thing that we kind of miss looking at some of these two dimensional images is how it feels when you're in the space. What's the full sensory experience? So can you tell me a little bit about your design process and how you play on all the senses to create you know, a calming or quiet space or any space really? You know, I hadn't seen this image in a long time, <laughs> 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 but but that's full of made goods in there, and I love that. This house in particular has lots of made goods. Um, it immediately for me it starts with the color. There's something about this paint color. Um, I think it's Cadet from Sharon Williams, and it's kind of like a smoky blue gray. And immediately it stops you and dulls the senses in a way that you just kind of want to relax and ease into the room and stay there for a while. And that's exactly um, how you create a sanctuary. Any room that you wanna linger in, um, that's a sanctuary to me. Um, this house is really traditional. So we went in trying to um, add a little bit more contemporary um, 
kind of points and touches just because our client came from a modern, modern architecture in LA and bought a house in Atlanta. So I needed to marry the two. Um, the idea of a minimal palette, that blue, white trim still on the ceiling, they wanted to highlight the architecture, but also we did the same with the sofa. So minimal palette, super natural tones, um, that blue, you know, the pool is just outside of that room. So it's kind of preparing you for what's in the next space and what the view looks like outside. And even the rug is just simple, black, white, gray, and um, lots of natural materials also help in creating sanctuary for me all the time. Um, that fireplace surround is custom. And again, it's just marble, you know, things that occur naturally, um, even if it's not a natural element, it's even if it's the palette that supports that always helps to create a sanctuary. Um, this room is not as used as I'd like it to be. It's a living room. You know how that goes in family houses. Um, kind of walk by it, but this, this couch is so comfy. <laughs> and that is another massive point for creating a sanctuary. If I'm gonna linger there, I need to be comfortable. Um, so that, that's definitely um, at the top of my list. Absolutely. I could not agree more. I think that is at the top of most people's list for um, a special space is that it's comfortable, but not too comfy. We don't always want other people to stay, right? Too <laughs> You're terrible. <laughs> what? Me? No. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. I think that was really fabulous. So um, Jessica, we have some really beautiful photos uh, from some of your design projects as well. And I'm just super interested in this kind of client designer dynamic Who's the one that starts the conversation around how a room should feel? I think unless um, there's something real, really specific that a client wants, like a yoga studio or something that's like, you know, very um, spa-like. Um, I, with all my designs, I always have the intention of, of making every room have multiple uses and feels and always, um, always trying to achieve the aspect of that you can uh, retreat and have a sanctuary-ness in any, of any part of the room. Um, and for instance, this room is, um, this is a historic Brookhaven, I mean, Brookwood Hills house, excuse me, that um, got completely renovated. And it's for a, um, a family that uh, the husband actually grew up here. So this was his, um, his home um, from childhood and it was very different, obviously, back then. And so our our intent was to take this um, beautiful historic home and just um, with the wonderful bones that it had, uh, bring it into today's environment and um, lighten it up and let it be um, just, you know, very calming for a family of five, um, hustle and bustle, everyday life. And this family room, I just love how it turned out because it's, it's a room that they're in every day. It's, you know, kids are going to be all over it, but at the same time, when you're in there by yourself, like in the day when the kids are gone, it, the natural light is beautiful. It's a great space to read and just, you know, relax. And um, the, it has a beautiful, which I should have given you another image, but um, a beautiful bay window as well that has just the most gorgeous natural light coming in. So um, I think that, I think every client wants to be able to have some calmness and peacefulness in every room that in their home. And so I think that's just really important to kind of, um, when you're designing spaces to really just take that into consideration of how it can be um, utilized in different ways. And so you can get the most use out of spaces. Yeah, and I love too how you pointed out that even within one room, there might be multiple stopping off points or multiple moments. I think that's a theme I'm hearing too. We heard that from Charlotte with her bay window. I think you can see that here, even in these two different little chat groups, um, right. even though it's one space. Um, so I love that. I think that's really, really beautiful. Um, I know I would never think to do that. So <laughs> that's lovely. Um, okay, great. So next, I just would love to talk a little bit, you know, we've touched on it some. This past year has been us using our homes for just about everything, right? Uh, we've gone from 
you know, kind of breezing in and out of our house throughout the day on our way to an appointment or our way to dinner with friends, to dining at home, working, teaching kids. So I think this year we've seen the rise in the importance of self-care and self-care in different ways. So I'd love for y'all to tell us a little bit about the way thinking about those moments of self-care is influencing or changing the way that you design a room or a home. Um, so Charlotte, tell us a little bit about that. Well, I love that you mentioned self-care and then a picture of my bar at home. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> because a lot of self-care happened this past year in that bar. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm sure. Um, but I actually, I'm, I'm glad that this, this image popped up because I think when you, you talk about sanctuaries, you think of a very um, neutral and, um, and like, you know, like the, the colors that are, that are in the space are, are white and lavender and light blues, but this is in my home and, and this is one of my sanctuaries. I love this room and it, it evokes happiness to me and the colors are, are exciting and, um, and vibrant and alive. And I just feel alive when I'm in this room. I love this space too, because it doesn't have a TV and I'm not a huge TV watcher. And actually during quarantine, I, I went reverse and I didn't even turn on the TV. Um, and so it was nice to pick up a book instead. And it was nice to, um, to be in this room and, and just not be distracted with even wanting to turn on the TV and watch something. So this is where I came in the morning to have my coffee. And then I also in the evening um, came to have a drink. Um, so it's a sanctuary um, in different ways, but it's, it, it does evoke different emotion, emotions than, um, than what you would think in a sanctuary that would be more neutral and more calming. So I feel like there's different, there's different um, emotions, I think, that, um, that a sanctuary can, can provide. And I think you have to look internally for what you're needing at the moment to, to find that sanctuary for yourself. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think bookending your day to in a special place is a really nice way to kind of kick it off and then also, you know, recharge and turn the brain off right after you've spent all day, probably in another part of the house. So, <laughs> I love that. Um, Jessica, tell us a little bit too about kind of how you're considering self-care or, you know, those kind of quiet moments in homes. Um, well, this image is the same thing as Charlotte. This is a, a picture of a, a beautiful bar that um, that is, seems to be very important to clients these days. Um, um, and then there's another image. I don't know if you can find it, but I was going to, um, the little um, office that I was going to just yes. um, speak to that um, I think with everybody knowing, like, um, yes, that one. Um, so this is a office that's off of a kitchen that is kind of hidden and I think um, again with so much working at home um, and knowing that you know it's different these days knowing that if you're gonna have to do it you need to have a space that it'll be positive environment for you as far as the self you know feeling like um, if you're gonna be having kids all over the place working at home you need to be able to have space that you can retreat to you can push them you know close the doors um, just have a sense of quiet. And, um, I think that's so important in designing homes, um, for the aspect of self-care and even thinking about, you know, master bed, uh, bathrooms and, um, dressing places and just places that you can go to make yourself feel better, um, doing the day-to-day -day things. I mean, if you're going to end up having to work at home, make it a beautiful space. So that again, it just, you have more um, peace and um, you're, you want to do it. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't agree yeah. more. I, yeah, like, I think you were going to say like push the kids out and that's okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or close push them, them out. Push them into the room and close the door. But, yeah. <laughs> or push them in. That's fine. Right. Too. Um, and yeah. again, this is a, a bathroom that we designed for, um, it's a traditional, um, again, happens to be in Brookwood Hills. Um, um, and again, it's just kind of like, ah, oh, you just want to walk in and be like, ah, oh, you know, it's, it's hard to get up every day. Um, so I think just, I just think making, making your surroundings so um, inviting and peaceful, just, it just helps give you that push. 
to get through it all. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. And I think you're, you're hitting on some really important topics there. Um, Michelle, let's talk a little bit too about the way you design and how you include self-care or these kind of quiet reflective moments. <laughs> That's funny. My name and in, in quiet in the same sentence. That's, <laughs> know, yeah. that, that's, that's funny to me. Uh, back, new background, by the way. We lost signal for a second, but I'm back. Love it. Um, I feel like, uh, personally, when it comes to self-care, you know, our relationship, my relationship with our clients becomes so incredibly personal. Um, and I, I know it's true for all of us. But I swear, I'm, I, I have dinner with clients and drinks with clients more than my actual friends. They are my new friends. And... Uh, the biggest, the biggest note for us is probably bathrooms. Um, I spend a lot of time choosing bathtubs <laughs> because that is like the ultimate, right? And currently I'm actually changing out my own master bathroom. And it's really about immediately escaping. I think any room that makes you forget where you are, that you're in Atlanta, that you're at home, um, and having that hospitality experience at home for me is amazing. Um, I hate the idea of living better or having a better experience at a hotel than in my own home because I know I know the guy who lives there, you know, and I really like to get that across to our clients. It's important that they understand that we are there to create the the ultimate luxury experience at home, um, and that's really the only reason to hire a designer. Um, so bathrooms and bathtubs are incredibly important for uh, bringing self care into the mix, and I'd have to say. The second most important spot and group of ladies is is the home office, especially right now. Um, you know, you've got to find a way to make that comfortable and amazing because we're spending so much time there. Um, I work from home also. It's very difficult not to sneak upstairs and take a nap, but yeah. <laughs> but you know, all aspects of the room speak to um, what's going to keep me going and nourished and excited to be there all day. Um, from the chair to the pallet in the room to um, just the comforts of, of home, um, you know, because the office is a home away from home. So uh, there's coffee, you know, there is snacks and whatever it takes to keep me in there. And as far as design, I love, I love, I love artwork to self care. Does that sound crazy? Because it's one of those things that, you know, it keeps your imagination going. It's, it's easy to in, interpreting something different. And, and, and it keeps me, I don't know, it keeps me inspired to work. I, I, love, I love the abstracts that we have in the office. I think it contributes to my self-care uh, in, in the workspace. I love that. And I think you're kind of touching on um, another really important question, which is, are you guys being asked for you know, certain things or certain rooms or certain moods, you know, to evoke something in a space that you weren't being asked to design maybe a year ago or two years ago, pre-pandemic. Um, you know, you just touched on artwork as a, a means of inspiration. Um, we talked about a yoga studio, I think a minute ago. So uh, Jessica, tell me a little bit, is there, are there any spaces that you're finding people are asking for that you just hadn't really thought about designing before? Um, I would say, um, yeah, definitely exercise rooms for sure. Getting, um, you know, more popular and, uh, craft rooms. I'm doing several of those for kids to, um, again, there have their space and, um, really making that usable and bright and happy. And, and again, kind of back to, um, the bar, the Butler's pantry that has been obviously big, but it's, it's it's gotten more popular and it's also been a place where I think people will, um, stretch, you know, stretch their, um, limits a little bit, or, you know, to be a little, again, get more color, um, the materials, metals and marbles, and it's kind of like add some jewelry to it. Um, high gloss, uh, paint. This one was, um, um, the color is Pharaoh and ball. I think it's card room green, I think, or, but I just love the, I love green. And um, again, this is a place that, that color brings um, a sanctuary to me. But um, I think these small spaces are just been very popular with my clients on getting details, just really beautiful details down in, um, in a place to 
again, where people can gather and just relax and, you know, it's, I don't know, it's just been something that's heightened, I guess I would say, um, for me. We're all indulging, right? I feel like indulgence is a form of self-care. Like actually giving, I think COVID has created this thing where we're giving ourselves license to do some of the things we want to do and not the things that we have to do. We've been so regimented, right? And indulgence is a form of self-care because we feel this new freedom. Our clients are so inspired to design their spaces the way they imagine them. And they're really open to our ideas where before, you know, they felt a little bit more afraid to take a risk. And I think a happy result of, you know, being um, living through the pandemic has been a little bit, being a little bit more open-minded. And I think indulgence as a form of self-care, we can't go without saying that. Yes, and just taking more risks and, you yeah. know, and just to get... I think to get more um, <clears throat> stimulation and just, you know, again, just to agree feel like versus just blah, boring, you know, gray and white. I've just, I've seen a lot of people want color. Um, again, I think just to um, just inspire, I don't know, just make you feel. <laughs> but I, you I, know, I, we saw it in your work. It. You definitely get it. I think people before the pandemic were stimulated outside of the home and there were lots of places that you had traveled to and go out to dinner and you were stimulated by other areas and other spaces. And so now that nobody was traveling outside of the home, you wanna you want to feel stimulated at home as well. So I think that yeah. I agree with um, Michelle and Jessica that you know a lot of clients, I and mean, we have a lot of clients that come to us for pattern and color anyway, um, but there, a lot of our clients that were a little bit more on the safe side are asking for some more exciting things at home. And, and not in every room necessarily, but definitely some spaces to change that um, to change that mood. Charlotte, the, the bringing the outdoors in is like such a huge point. Mm-hmm. Um, I love trees. I'm obsessed with trees and all things green. So we're celebrating views wherever we can. Um, and we're bringing that actual color green into interiors more now than ever. Uh, people who did not like it or hated it before, all of a sudden are open to it and they don't even understand why. You know, it's just that we've been locked in and bringing that that natural color, that natural element, and just evoking that mood of outdoors is so valuable. I, I agree. And Katie, another space that we've been asked a lot recently to design that we never have before um, are Zoom rooms. So with everyone Zooming and, um, and doing FaceTime, I think it's really important. I think for the first months, everyone up their computer and turned their camera on and just whatever was in the background was in the background. But now it's like everyone has the ring light. You need the natural light. You need the, the background setting. And so I think it's really important and to, to have a sophisticated presentation for yourself. And so um, especially a lot of our clients whose husbands um, and wives if they have big corporate jobs and they were used to traveling around the world to meet with with other clients, you know, they're not able to do that. And so when they're having really important meetings, they need to have a very sophisticated background. And so um, a lot of um, these spaces now that we're creating in home offices have a, an entirely separate Zoom desk that has the appropriate background, the appropriate light, everything's elevated. Um, to the right height. So that is something that is definitely um, COVID specific that we have been um, designing recently. That's really cool. I didn't realize we were making like little sets within our, you know, our homes too, but it makes complete sense. You want to be, you know, in the right place, the right light, you know, so that you look good and you're, um, yeah, and you don't have to worry about your cat scampering by or something. <laughs> yeah, and life, life moves on and, and business moves forward. And so, you know, you just can't stop. You have to keep going and reinventing yourself. And so, um, you know, speaking to one of my clients who he used to travel to, ha- you know, across the world to have a in-person meeting for a big, for a big closing deal or something like they're not doing that anymore. So they have to the same experience has to happen through the screen, which is really difficult. So um, it's really important to to get that right and to be as elevated as as it can be for those. Experiences. Charlotte, I'm gonna have to call you for tips. We we got one request for a Zoom room uh, in the condo we're working on in Miami. So I'm excited. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna call we, you. Um, <laughs> we've got some good ideas now. We've been it's been uh, um, a lot of research and a lot of like figuring out what works and what doesn't work, but we've, yeah. we've got it now. 
Yeah. Um, another space also that people have been, uh, we've got a lot of requests for are pool houses. We've mm -hmm. had five or six different clients um, this year that have been, that have put in pools and then pool houses because they've been, you know, trapped in like everybody else. But um, so that's been kind of a fun thing to do. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I bet. And how, what a, what a lovely luxury too, to kind of even get that transition of leaving your home and going to a new space. I, mm. I personally missed that during lockdown, just getting to shut my front door and, and then get out in the world and, and do all that. But um, I love that. That's really fun. So kind of on that same topic, I was thinking about while y'all were talking, you know, I think maybe a year, year and a half ago, open concept floor plans were like the hot thing, right? Everybody had these kitchens that blended into their living rooms that merged with a foyer and a grand dining room and all these spaces were so open. And now we are in lockdown and quarantine and we've got families that are inhabiting you know, multiple spaces at once and you're trying to Zoom or you're trying to be on a phone call or you're doing something important. Um, so tell me a little bit about how maybe some of the challenges of incorporating these quiet spaces or these special moments within that existing open concept floor plan, if you run into any of those. I love compartmentalized spaces. I think the open concept thing was huge because it was such a departure from the architecture of the past, right? And uh, we, I think everybody was obsessed with lofts for a long time. And we wanted to get that loft feel in a family home. And that's where that was born. Merging that family room in the kitchen, because that's where everyone gathers anyway, was mm -hmm. genius. It was like, oh, wow, this totally makes sense. And the house feels bigger. We can have a big island. It was indulgent in that way. But I'm a romantic. I really like the idea of closing a door and having private spaces and having one identity here in this room specifically functioning for this reason, you know, with this goal and this intent, and then walking through a, a space, a doorway and, and discovering something else, you know, another facet of this, this homeowner's personality. Um, I use furniture, mm -hmm. obviously, to divide spaces. I mean, we all do, that's, that's an obvious answer. Um, and um, recently, Speaking of indulgence, I just built out between the kitchen and the family room what looks like restaurant quality um, wine chiller. Um, it's all glass on all sides, but it's refrigerated from the top, stone on the floor, in the middle of the room as a room divider. So it's about 24 inches deep, about nine feet wide, and the wine is just suspended. And it's stunning. I'm like waiting for the server to come around the corner and ask me my order, but it's amazing. And, and I mean, that's the kind of indulgence that we've been experiencing. Uh, and wine is self-care in my book. I mean, I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> that's the kind of uh, indulgence and in, in, in we've been experiencing uh, as a result of the pandemic and I'll take it, I'll keep that. Um, but yeah, I mean, when it comes to open concepts, um, I don't know, I personally, and pulling away from it more and more. Yes. Yeah. I, I agree with Michelle. I think, you know, I like having these small, not small, but, but more intimate spaces. And so to have a place where you can go and shut the door and, and close off from the rest of the house. And, and also when one space bleeds into the next, you don't, you don't necessarily change. It doesn't change how you feel. So I think when you have more compartmentalized spaces, rooms can flow together, but they can feel different and look different and evoke different emotions and, and serve different purposes. Um, so I do, I do like those kind of compartmentalized spaces. Um, we've definitely been getting a lot of, um, of closet requests as well. Um, and I think <laughs> that most of it's from, from mothers that need to, go into a, a I mean they're saying a closet but it's essentially a, a, a room in there oh, yeah. that can serve as I mean we had a client ask for um for a rose bar in her closet <laughs> speaking it's of self-care and indulgence <laughs> um and I so you know, but she needed a space to to leave her four children you know and to to go and do something on her own and you know she'll have friends come over and they'll hang out in her closet and it's so fun and it's such a happy a happy little space to get away so um i think that you know as michelle said it's it's a it's about indulgence as well and i think that's really important to to indulge and take care of yourself and and to do special things for yourself 
Yeah. yeah and I, I agree too on, um, on all of the intimate spaces. And I find that now most of the houses that I'm working with still have a large kitchen and an open, you know, main family room where, you know, it is the main center and for entertaining, but definitely um, going into every, the smaller spaces are so important and having the offices, the closets, the sitting rooms, the places where the kids can um, get away. And so, and it's, it is difficult to um, have that big open floor plan and just try to divide it up and get smaller spaces. And again, really the only option just, you know, lots of sitting areas, places that, you know, you go over here, I go over here, but um, it is still one big room. And I think that is difficult. So I think that um, a lot of our clients as well are just really wanting some intimacy and, um, and rooms have specific um, um, needs and specific purposes, I think. I think. I think a lot of the clients now too are really purposeful in designing their house because they have been in the uh, quarantine for so long. So I think the client is a lot more, um, I don't say educated with what they want now, but it just seems that um, they really do know what they want more or what needs they want to fulfill. So I think that's been um, helpful. And again, they're more um, involved and more um, um, excited about these spaces because they are here more often and want to have that indulgence. Like, um, Charlotte and Michelle are saying too. They slow down long enough to pay attention to it, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. It, it, it's been more fun, I think, since for um, for us definitely. For us, other yes. than other than not meeting um, promises as far as lead times, right? That's not fun. <laughs> that's yeah, so what we're talking about. Patience, 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 right now. <laughs> yes. And that's why they have bars in their house. And, you you know, we keep them stocked with wine. Yeah, I think it's um, what I'm also hearing from y'all. I love that your clients are collaborating with you more and more engaged in the design process. I know from the, you know, the industry side, we're seeing more designers with their clients in tow who have really intelligent questions and are really interested in all these details. So uh, how has that changed kind of the process for you a little? Um, well, for me, um, it's just been more enjoyable and we, uh, we're getting to, we're working faster. I don't know. I'm it's more efficient. I feel like, um, I feel like we're coming to decisions quicker because they're more, um, educated with themselves or they're more engaged. And, um, I don't know. So I feel like it's been a, a positive in that sense that, um, we're able to, um, to move quicker in making decisions and design ideas. Um, but not, that. yeah, product is, is definitely not quicker right now, but. Uh, <laughs> I think so our clients are, are very intentional with their needs. Yeah. I think before they were, they were leaning to us to really guide them and say, you know, I don't really know what I want with this space um, because they probably hadn't sat down in that space long enough to understand right. what they wanted. But now that everyone had been at him, they were very intentional. Or my clients have been very intentional about their spaces um, because they've spent a lot of time there more so than they normally do. And I think they're very intentional with not just what they need personally, but you know, if they have a family, what their children need. Mm -hmm. I mean, their children need a space, a sanctuary as well, and their children need a place there to to call school. So you know, last year, everyone, all these children were at home trying to learn. You know, in all over the house. And if you have multiple kids, you're trying to spread them out at the same time. I mean, it was, it was a nightmare. So I think that children need a very, children need a sanctuary to learn as well. And so I think that was really important this past year. And we've had a lot of um, trying to sort that out as well. So, um, but I think everyone's very intentional about what they need their spaces to be now for their whole family. Yeah, I think that's great. And I think there's something to be said for considering every person, no matter their age or their, you know, their role in the home. I don't know if that was always the case um, prior to this. So I love that more of the family is being involved in the design process and getting them interested in and excited yeah. about being at home. Yeah. Um, I'm having quite the opposite effect. I feel like my oh. clients are willing to invest more. Like oh. they're willing to invest more money, yeah. but also give me a little bit more license. Like, you know what? We decided we're going to stay in this house. We're going to keep it. So Michelle, let's, let's take the option A, which might be 
a little bit more because we want to invest in this space that we're committed to where we you know have our lives happening and uh so i, I that's another positive for me um people are actually willing to invest more money into their home so they have long-term solutions and they don't have to think about it again in another 10 years i love it yeah i think you're i think you're completely right um, so I think we're, we've had a fabulous conversation, just us, and now I'm, I'm going to engage with some of these questions because we've got some fabulous audience questions as well. Um, one thing I'd love to know, uh, one of our questions is, what is one element of design most often overlooked when creating a sanctuary space or kind of a special space within the home? Anybody can go. Um, I think that light, uh, natural light is important in windows and, you know, direction of the sun and, you know, what, what direction you're facing. Um, and I think that needs to always be looked at in um, first stages of designing a space and what you want out of that. If, um, you know, windows and light, natural light is important. Um, I think that can sometimes get overlooked. Yeah, I think me, backing off of Jessica too is that um, I think a lot of people overlook what's outside, you know, mm -hmm. outdoor spaces and and you know a, a patio at. or a terrace or a little garden area can also be a sanctuary, just a, you know a very intimate place in the yard. So I think that um, is often overlooked. That's fine. I think the experience uh, is enhanced by the hand of the fabrics in everything you touch. I think all the surfaces also need to speak to your senses to really create a sanctuary. And if I am leaning back on a velvet or a mohair and my pillow is a, a fluffy boucle, I'm gonna have a better experience. I'm gonna immediately become more calm because of the interaction between me and the fabrics that I'm interacting with. Absolutely. Oh, I love, yeah. Now you just made me want to go curl up on that really <laughs> lovely <laughs> so Beautiful velvets and yeah. <laughs> I just want to like touch everything. I love that. Um, another question we have here, when starting over in a space, do you typically pick out one inspiration piece and build on that? Or tell us a little bit about that process, kind of where did, where's your jumping off point? Uh, what has to stay? What's the deal breaker in this room? What are you not willing to part with? And that's where I start. Because usually I want to get rid of all of it. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, I'm, in this, I'm in this space where I'm attempting to celebrate spaces for what they are. And let's highlight what the best of it is, right? So, you know, our homeowners don't feel like they have terrible taste or their house is unworthy. But, like, let's celebrate what's... Uh, what that deal breaker is. Let's make it the focal point of the room, not just the piece you don't want to get rid of, but really zhuzh it. And I start there. I love that. Absolutely. Um, I'm kind of, um, uh, same thing. If you have to work around something, then I agree with Michelle, but um, I, I, it's, it's always different for me. I mean, if it could be a piece of art, if it's a, a fabric, I mean, I just love fabrics. And a lot of times I start from that. Um, if it's a rug, um, wallpaper i just i think you just pick one you know one element and then it, it comes from there but it's it's always changing for me so i don't i think it depends on the space you know what is the sanctuary space you're trying to uh, um to do um so i think it's different for every space but i do think it is um nice for people to have one element that they can kind of focus on and then it can go from there because it can be very overwhelming to try to be like how do i put this whole room together you know, not having anything. So I would just try to find one, one pretty thing that you like, and then go, <laughs> go from there. Yeah. Absolutely. We did that recently where I agree. I think that it's too, it becomes too distracting um, when there's multiple pieces, but just finding one thing, even, even if it's the smallest little treasure you have, just something that, it, that provides inspiration for the space is important. Um, we had a client come uh, that's moving from New York and they, have been in New York for 15 years and have kids and they got married and moved straight up there and and she's moving back down to the south and she said you know I don't even remember what my wedding china looks like because we've never unboxed it from our wedding and I was like that's a travesty I can't believe this and so that was our jumping off point I was like let's unpack it let's get it out and let's put it up on the wall and so that was kind of an exciting um jumping off point for their dining room so it just takes one thing I think 
That I think that, oh my gosh. And that, that hurts me too, as somebody who loves tabletop. No. <laughs> Pull out the cool China, use it. Yeah. Um, and kind of on that same topic, another uh, Tammy asked, can a dining room be replaced without losing home value? I don't, I don't know if you, know, you guys can speak to that, but, um, and such as using it for maybe a pool table or as a kitchen nook or some other kind of different space than maybe we would have done before. Can we, can we ditch the formal dining room? Absolutely. We can ditch anything that doesn't make sense. And if you use that room twice a year, and, and so 363 days, you just walk by it, that's ridiculous, you know? So obviously they're getting loud back there. Um, obviously <laughs> we, can, uh, we can, you know, have a multi-purpose room, right? Um, it would be easy to switch that out just for the holiday season. We bring out the tree for a month. Why don't we bring out the dining table for a month? We could start a new trend right here today. I love it. I'm here for it. <laughs> I actually did that during COVID. I um, transitioned my dining room into a home office. There you and go. And left the dining table and just took all of the, I, I left two chairs and then stashed away the other, the others. And it was, it's, it's, it is another sanctuary in my house that wasn't really, <laughs> like Ms. Michelle said, use as often as it should be. So now I sit there every day, which is really exciting. So yeah. I don't feel like you can keep the space and just transition the way you use it. Exactly. I agree. And actually two, we're doing two new construction homes that do not have a dining room. Um, so it's, I think you can definitely do that. And, you know, one thing I did during quarantine, which I ordered a 72 inch round um, fold up table from Amazon and have a great, fabulous um, table skirt made um, and take it outside, you know, and have, you can sit eight people and it's like, you know, things like that. Um, oh, you can do different, you know, or <laughs> again, at Christmas time, you have just like a couple different table skirts made, make it a dining room and, and pop up, pop up dining room. I like that. <laughs> I love that. I love that transitory kind of feel about a space. I think that's really fun and it keeps our homes fresh and exciting, right? There's This has been good for us. Like COVID has yeah. been good for designers. Don't, don't you feel like your imagination is in overdrive? Like you creating solutions that you would have never pulled out before. I think that's so cool. I love hearing what you guys are doing. Yeah, me too. Yeah, same. And on that same kind of topic, Jessica's perfect segue, someone else asked, you know, we were talking about, I think Michelle mentioned bringing the outdoors in and some other ways we can do it. So you mentioned natural light. Um, we talked about maybe potted plants. You know, what are some other ways that you're finding to kind of help bring that freshness back into the home? I, um, I mean, I think rattan is so, so big right now. Um, I think, you know, bringing that some, bamboo rattan elements kind of in with the, again, planters, you know, a chair or, I don't know, just that kind of, um, I think that's a fun little way. Um, and I guess just natural textures and fabrics. Um, I know you said plants. Um, we can say it again. I love plants. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> flowers, I flowers, can, flowers, flowers, flowers. Yeah. I, yeah. I can't go to Whole Foods without coming, yeah. coming out with flowers. I think you should treat yourself every week to new, you know, a new bunch of flowers in every yeah. room. You yes. know? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I'm not sure if there's a wedding or a funeral at my house right now, but I went to Whole Foods <laughs> last night and the tulips were on sale, guys. And I bought $188 worth. <laughs> and because I'm an Amazon Prime member, I saved forty one dollars. Oh my gosh! I was like, "Come <laughs> on!" Between so you, flowers they were and like, away. yeah, right. The cane back. There's a cane back uh, the chair that I'm that I'm eyeing at Makers right now. Like I'm obsessed with. So yeah, <laughs> love a good product plug. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. So, um, oh my gosh, you guys are giving me so much, so much excitement. Um, okay, another great question, and this is more specific. Michelle, I think it was Michelle, uh, tell us again the color in that room with the fabulous um, portrait in the white chandelier. Cadet. Um, that Listen, it's cadet blue. The mm -hmm. chandelier is the cloud from apparatus, and the photograph is the homeowner. Really? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Just I mean, if you're that gorgeous, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm doing um, a dining room right now where I just pan painted all the paneling that cadet blue. Yes. Um, it's beautiful. Isn't it? Doesn't it make you feel good? 
Yeah. Yeah. I love that. What are some other favorite paint colors that y'all are kind of going to lately? Currently obsessed with Alabaster from Sherlyn Williams. I am painting every, if I stood still long enough, I might paint me Alabaster. <laughs> um, it, I, I don't know, it just, it's a, it's a creamy white, it feels rich, it, it's a perfect backdrop. Right now, that's where I am. Love it. We've been painting a lot. We just painted a room, um, the Fair and Volcalamine. And um, it's just a really soft, beautiful pink. And I think that it doesn't, mm. it doesn't necessarily feel too feminine. It's a dirty pink. And so it's, um, it's a, it's a crowd pleaser. I like that dusty rose. It's a dirty pink. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica, what's your hot that color of the moment? Got, Jessica, what's your hot cadet, color? Yeah. Um, I love that cadet blue that he was saying, but we've been doing um, just for, instead of a white, um sharon williams creamy um as well it's like the alabaster it's it's just been really really a great color it's just not too white it's um, not yellow um it's just kind of milky it's um, vanilla ice cream yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> and on that same topic we're curious to know what's your process for balancing color and the use of color um or developing a color story in a room or house I personally go in knowing that I am going to max out at three or four colors in the entire house, maximum. Um, that's including bedrooms. I just, I really believe that one space should prepare you for the next. And it's a continuous thought. Um, it's the same narrative, even though the function of the room is different, it's the same homeowner. And I don't want to jolt. Um, I had that in my bedroom, my personal bedroom. And um, it was fun because it was novel for a second but that's not what design is, that's decorating, you know? And I think design is all encompassing. And so I'd rather a continuous and consistent narrative. I love that. Great. Okay. So let me see here. And then I guess just kind of bringing it back home um, in the final few minutes here, what space became a sanctuary for you guys this last year? Tell us a little bit about where you go to retreat. <laughs> I think I already touched on mine. It was the, um, it was the red bar that um, that's in my home that was in the slideshow. But it became such a sanctuary for me. And what you can't see in the picture, also, there's a stone fireplace, and then there's a huge wall of windows. So there's a ton of natural light, um, and lots of different elements in that room. So as I mentioned, I would you know have my coffee and go in there. And it's also this probably one of the smaller rooms, smallest rooms in my house. Um, so it just felt cozy and it, it doesn't feel too um, overwhelming just for one person. So, um, mm -hmm. so I would go in there, have my coffee, get my day started. Um, and then I would usually finish out my, my evenings there um, after my kids went to bed. So, um, so that has definitely been my sanctuary and will continue to be my sanctuary. <laughs> and it's a fabulous yeah, Michelle said, there's a never ending supply of good wine in there. So that's <laughs> the that's, that, that, um, that keeps giving. <laughs> It's so important. <laughs> it's <is> very important. <laughs> Jessica, where's your sanctuary um, this year? We, we have an outside um, little pavilion that has a, a fireplace and um, it. we have a little um, waterfall pond thing. It, it was with the house that we bought it. We didn't do it, but um, <laughs> it's okay. We can keep, you know, I know, like I don't want to sign, but, um, but it's just, it's, we were, so we were outside all the time and that's where, and um, and we have a TV there and fire, like I said, a fireplace and um, comfortable chairs. So that's where we were. And so we felt very lucky to be able to have that outside experience during the whole thing. Um, Cause that's, we live there. <laughs> awesome. I know getting outdoors has been huge yeah. for all of us. Michelle, what's yours? This is gonna be the most ridiculous. I'm ready. Telling answer. But I convert selfishly converted my guest room into a dressing room. And yes. I've always wanted one. Like I've always wanted a space, not to, not to just hang my clothes where I can see them, you know, uh, all at the same time, but also somewhere where I can go to get dressed and get undressed. That's not the closet. Because as long as I can keep my clothes out of my bedroom, it'll always be neat. Yes. And so <laughs> the dressing room is uh, incredible for me. There's a sofa in there, there's a large table, um, it, it sounds ridiculous, but I 
am a man who needs a dressing room. And I'm here for that. Good for you. <laughs> I need a dressing room too oh, now. I didn't realize, I feel like I need all these spaces. I need a better bar, I need a better outside, and now I need an amazing dressing room. So that's so fabulous. I really want to thank all three of you for coming, for participating. This has been so much fun. I've really enjoyed um, hearing from y'all. And I, I can tell from the audience engagement that they've really enjoyed um, getting inspired from each one of you too. So thank you so much for joining us today. And I just wanna say quickly, um, if you have any other questions, you can always reach out. Uh, Made Goods is here at ADAX, so come visit us. We're on the fourth floor and you can always check out our website, madegoods.com. Check out the websites of these fabulous designers. Please go Instagram, stalk them. You'll find <laughs> some inspiration for sure. So um, any last comments, y'all? I just wanna say thank you. Hey, thank you all so much. It's good to see everybody. Hopefully we can do it in person next time. Oh, yeah, I had a great time. I, hearing what you guys are doing was super inspiring. I'm really, really happy to be here. Likewise. Hey, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thank you all so much. Thanks, Katie. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.